Okay, the, the first one you have already seen, and the next, please. And uh, this is a view of one of the sites in Bjørndal near Longyearbyen. Uh, and uh, this was actually a part of a uh, Norwegian uh, Polish uh, research uh, study done in Alventon and Bjørndal. Next, please. And we called, uh, actually, we published a paper called Intraspecific Differences in Spectral Reflectance Curves as Indicators of Reduced Vitality in High Arctic Plants. And uh, you see the long row of authors here. And uh, this is headed uh, actually by Bogdan Sagajewski and his team from uh, Poland. Next, please. And uh, this is a geograph. I think it's uh, showing rapid eye and a rapid eye image. This is the German satellite. And you see all the sites we have from Longyearbyen, Alventon, and Björndal. Next, please. Yeah, that was the same. Next. And there is uh, an overview of the pre-processing steps for statistical analysis. And you see uh, we use rapid eye image and, use, uh, and calculate vegetation indices, etc. And uh, the in situ data was acquired by uh, ACD spectrometer. And um, actually, uh, I have um, in the Dropbox, there is an article on the same article as I show here, from, result from here is uh, situated on the, so you can see, study yourself this new graph. Next, please. This is actually what we uh, used in field is uh, ACD field spec tree spectral radiometer and uh, has a spectral range up to from 350 nanometer to 2500 nanometer. And the spectral resolution width is three nanometer at 700 nanometer. So uh, if we compare this one is uh, with the flux, which uh, actually has the best spectrometer is uh, 0.3 nanometer or 0.4 nanometer. It's, so it's um, more coarse than, uh, than the flux spectrometer actually. Uh, so um, we can't uh, extract, for instance, uh, solar induced percents from it. Next, please. Yeah, actually uh, the same. Next, please. And this is uh, uh, other view graph showing the locations using uh, Sentinel-2A, which we also used in a, a, a following up study. Next, please. Uh, actually, we used in this, uh, I will show results from another uh, part of the study. And uh, here we only use heavy metal concentration in plant species and soil as an indicator of vegetation condition. And uh, as you know, Longyearbyen and as well as New Olsen and Bionsburg and Pyramid, actually there are small uh, settlements that are uh, actually 
um, based on, on uh, coal mining. So there are a lot of dust and uh, these coal mining activities have spread heavy metals and, uh, and all the compounds in a wide area around the, uh, around the, the, the Longyearbyen area, but also New Olsen. And we, we actually, we cannot consider it, this as a pristine area at all, areas at all. I think it's only Hunshun that is uh, actually a pristine area where we can actually measure uh, vital con or, or uh, pristine conditions for the vegetation. Next, please. And uh, one of the also the we also in this particular area uh, area we also wanted to to check the situation also on the climatic, but uh, actually before we conclude from this uh, part of the lecture, we actually did not find any uh, climatic uh, um, changes from uh, the near, from, from Jörn down to inner part of Odenton. But uh, what we tried to do was to check out uh, what can uh, the different, uh, if we can extract some of the vegetation indices. And here we have uh, listed up a lot of vegetation indices that we used in this particular study. And you see, uh, uh, you see, for instance, the, the enhanced vegetation index and the normalized difference vegetation index. It's the, uh, the vegetation indices that are uh, used mostly in, in uh, the scientific world. So, but we have also other uh, vegetation in this is that are more sensitive to both climate but also to heavy metal condition uh, heavy metal content in both vegetation and soil next please um, here uh, we present the spectral bands providing the best separation between four species. And uh, actually, this was the four species we found that was, uh, in a way, most sensitive either for climate change or the climate, uh, in a way, climate. Uh, differences between the more inner part of Allentown and the outer outskirts of Longyearby. And the, the four species are Distorta vivipara, Salix polaris, Cassiope tetragona, Andreas octopetala. And uh, more or less these four species, they are all common all over the circumpolar area. And uh, as you see, uh, we, we found that uh, uh, these uh, four species were, were best separated in the selected bands of 400 up to 2,296. Uh, nanometer, and uh, you see there are a lot of bands that separate them. And uh, as you see also that, uh, for instance, uh, Dryas, Octobetala, and Casop, there is in a way a skewness in the in the in the plateau of the near infrared um, uh, area. And also in the red edge, there is a, 
they are more or less skewed to um, to lower wavelengths, and that, that's uh, uh, maybe due to uh, heavy metal condition or content, but also to climate change. Climate uh, they are more sensitive to climate change or climate conditions. Next, please. And uh, this is uh, uh, the images of Salix Polaris at the uh, up, upper left part uh, and the Bistorta Vivipara at the uh, lower left part. And we have the Drias Octobitala on the on the right side of the this graph. So next piece. And you see also the spectral reflectance curves of the Cassiope and, and um, uh, Cassiope Tetragona uh, has been uh, 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 very sensitive to to uh, actually it's a species that needs uh, a lot of snow to survive during winter so then you have this uh, rain on snow events and, and um, uh, as well as the snow is disappearing uh, the the Cassiope is in a way uh, uh, can uh, get very bad injuries and even die, as you see uh, on the uh, right side of the, this uh, view graph. There is a uh, grayish area where the Cassiope tetragona, it says Varshrap, is, is, uh, is dead. Next, please. And uh, here is the best bands form within selected spectral regions. And uh, we can head for the next. And uh, we have chosen this um, uh, for example, NDVI and uh, red edge NDVI, and this is the formulas. And uh, in order to uh, upscale to uh, the rapid eye and Sentinel 2 satellites. Next, please. And um, here we have a view graph showing the vegetation indices related to the damage ratios and heavy metal concentration in plants and soil. And uh, uh, as you see, the red edge and DVI was uh, quite good. And the uh, inflection point of the red edge was a quite good. Um, show the quite good relationship between the different uh, for example cup, copper uh, concentration and also as well as uh, nickel concentrations oh, 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 um, in uh, in the first was was in Dryas Octopitala, the last one in in Cassiope Cetragona, and the damage ratio also showed quite good results. And um, yeah, next please uh, the upscaling we did was to up to rapid eye satellite that happened to pass over this same week. 
And we were happy that was a quite nice week with uh, a lot of sun. So we were happy to have a nice rapid eye uh, image from the same week as we were conducting field work. Next, please. And uh, we got a quite, this is only for five of the sites. Uh, and we got a quite good relationship between the rapid eye derived uh, red edge NDVI and the spectrometry derived red edge NDVI on the surface. Next, please. And uh, we also tested it on, uh, on the Sentinel 2A. Uh, I can say that Sentinel 2A is uh, have a, have a spatial resolution of uh, 10 meters or 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 um, larger, or uh, and and. Uh, while the rapid eye has uh, about five meters res spatial resolution. So that's why the, we uh, didn't get the same uh, uh, result as the rapid eye concerning the correlation between the, the, the red eye. NDVI and and uh, and the Sentinel two uh, red N NDVI. So so, uh, but we are working with another uh, another article on or manuscript or not. So we will integrate more of the results from the from also the. 2014 uh, field campaign. Next, please. Uh, conclusions from uh, the first study was that uh, as a result, a unique spectral laboratory of dominant plant species, heavy metal concentration and damage ratios were achieved with an indication that species specific changes due to environmental condition can best be differentiated in the 1401 to 2400 nanometer spectral region. And, um, and two key Arctic tundra species, Cassiope tetragona and Dryas octopetala exhibited significant can differences in the spectral region that were linked to a changing health status. And that was uh, actually a combination between uh, both climatic on the spot uh, or on site areas and, and the heavy metal content. Cadmium and lead were below detection levels, while manganese, copper, and zinc are quite near Longyearbyen, were at concentration comparable to other places in Svalbard. There were high levels of nickel near Longyearbyen, 0 0.014 uh, milligrams per gram, while it was low elsewhere. Relationship and um, actually the nickel uh, content could be uh, uh, as high as uh, we have around um, the, the some um, industrial plants in Poland and also in uh, in the Kola Peninsula, as I I uh, showed in the first lecture. Uh, relationships between field and satellite measurements were comparable. Uh, the red edge normalized difference vegetation index showed a strong significant relationship for the species Trias octopetala. So uh, actually we could uh, 
we can uh, hence uh, say that the best indicators on both uh, climatic condition uh, like um, effects of rain or snow uh, events during winter and uh, causing damage to especially the, the Cassiopeia, but also somewhat to the Rias, as well as heavy metal con uh, content could uh, be detected by these two species. Next, please. This was uh, actually the first. The other one uh, was, uh, uh, it's called feasibility or hyperspectral spectation indices for the detection of chlorophyll concentration in three high Arctic plants. And there is three, or we selected three of the four we have, uh, we have um, followed. And this is also with the same team as the first one. Next, please. And uh, we uh, have chosen other indices. Uh, there are a lot of vegetation indices and they are still coming. So, so the, there might be some one you can use for a, different purposes in your um, studies for their own. And uh, this is table two. Uh, we will go to next uh, geograph, please. In this, uh, we use the dual X force A. It's a small optical sensor uh, developed by Force A in France for assessment of flavonol, anthocyanin, and chlorophyll contents in leaves. And um, that's why also it was uh, a little bit uh, problems trying to uh, use that on uh, Cassiopeia uh, because uh, it was hard to get results, measurements on the Cassiopeia. Um, so that's why we, we restricted the study to the three species. Next, please. And uh, yeah, we can take, uh, there is uh, some value lengths that you can uh, extract different, app uh, actually applications or, or uh, for, for instance, carotene, etc. Et and uh, chlorophyll concentration and chlorophyll absorption, etc. etc. There is actually a library of different applications you can take out wavelengths and also band combination or uh, indices in order to to uh, extract information about uh, chlorophyll and uh, uh, health status in the, in the, the, the different species. Next, please. And this is uh, actually a, a figure is showing the chlorophyll concentration uh, of uh, Drea soctobitala. We start the vivid power and solis polaris along a gradient with decreasing oceanity at speed sparing for the different sites. And uh, uh, there is, uh, as I said, there is uh, not, I cannot say that there is a cli uh, oceanic uh, continental uh, gradient, but there might be some uh, different um uh, results to, uh, due to uh, climatic or rain on snow events and uh, also heavy metals and you see the values of the chlorophyll and uh, 
And uh, as you see, Dreyas uh, Octobitala showed up to have the lowest values uh, compared to Bistorta, Vivipara, and Salis Polaris. Next, please. And uh, all the 23 analyzed candidate vegetation and chlorophyll indices, the following show the best statistical correlation with the optical measurements or chlorophyll constellation. And that was the Vogelmann H, Red H index, Sarkotial and Miller index, modified normalized difference vegetation index at about 709 nanometer and the modified normalized difference index and the red edge again a normalized difference vegetation index at 705 and uh, the Kittelson and Merciliac index two. Kittelson is one of the leading persons in, in, in uh, actually in, in, uh, in, in establishing, uh, developing all, all vegetation indices. And then if you go back to the uh, former UGRAPH, you, uh, you see uh, some of the chlorophyll index uh, this is yeah um okay i i have the, uh, included that but uh we can go to the last one now and uh, the best in this is and uh, okay that was that uh, i wanted to the last one next one please uh, uh this is uh, the relationship between optically measured for the field concentration and the various vegetation index values. And you see the candidates and uh, how they differ, uh, different, uh, and how they differ between the different species here. So um, that actually, uh, we can go to the last one now, I think. And uh, oh, okay, next one. Uh, uh, go to the former two. Uh, the values uh, here you see the MOG index was the one of the best ones, as you see here. Next, please. And the health status of the three species and an assessment of the results from the analysis in the case that Salis polaris and B. Histota vivipara were in good health, while the dry octopotella was reduced, as we actually concluded in the first paper. This is consistent with other studies from the same area. There were also differences between study sites, probably as a result of local variation in environmental conditions. And uh, next, please. All these indices may be extracted from future satellite missions, missions like the NMAP, which will be uh, launched in uh, 2022, and the FLEX for Sense Explorer in 2024. And this is enable us to more efficient monitoring of vegetation condition in most and more inaccessible boreal and Arctic areas. Uh, it's a pity that uh, NMAP will cover, while the NMAP will cover Svalbard, the flex will not so, we have to convince the ESA to to uh, to uh, to also cover Svalbard. I think the Plex was going to uh, cover Bear Island, but that's uh, the half uh, the, the small island between 
uh, Norway and, and Svalbard, not covering the Svalbard archipelago at all. So I hope that the right people can show up and uh, and uh, and uh, that we can get some flex data from Svalbard too.